Hey, good morning, folks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm your radio teacher. Hello. My name is Walt. Hello. Okay, let's get going. So, uh, in the ham radio, we call our names our handle. So my handle is Walt. And uh, my call is K1DFO, or if you want to use acronyms, I'm one darn friendly operator. Okay? And I got my license a few years ago, back in 1957, when I was a freshman in high school. So I've had it for a few years. And I have an extra class license. We'll tell you what that means a little later on. And I have radios in my car, in my home, and I have portable radios like this one here. I do all kind of stuff. I like to teach radio classes. And maybe later on in one of the classes, I'll tell you something I did that you might find interesting. So let's just keep going. There's stuff in here that you don't need to have you just cross off in your book. We don't have to worry about the four beads. We're not going to take breaks. The only break is at 8.15 when we stop you go to your class. Uh, don't have to worry about beverages. If you had some good bathrooms, we don't want to worry about that. You guys know where they are. And books. Let me tell you about books. You've each got this book, which gives you all of the charts in my PowerPoints. Okay? So in my big book. So the first section is going to be the introduction. And then there's going to be 20 other sections. And the last section, though, the 22nd section, is called miscellaneous. And there'll be some things I'll show you in there. But the very, very, very last page in your book, the very last page is a list of acronyms. So as we go through this course, there'll be a lot of little acronyms. And you're going to say, oh my god, he, he said what that was two weeks ago. What is that? So this is a complete list of acronyms that are used inside here, okay? For what it's worth. Okay, that takes care of that chart. So a little bit of history about how amateur radio came about. Way back in the early 1900s, the Federal Communications Commission wanted to have uh, people who understood how to use radios in terms of a disaster. Now the disasters back then weren't what we have today. They were like the Mississippi River overflowing. They needed someone to go there. Well, back in those days, they didn't have, you couldn't go and buy radios in the early 1900s. So they, they decided, okay, what we'll do is we'll set up a hobby and we'll give these people privileges, frequencies, how much power they can transmit. And these electronics people would go and get a license. They'd build their own radios. When there was an emergency, they could use it for emergency. Otherwise, they used it for a hobby. Okay, there were several levels of classes. We'll explain what that means later. And it was incentive. So when I got my license back in 1957, that license was only good for one year. If I wanted to be, stay a ham radio operator, I had to get the next level of license. That's all gone away now, okay? Okay, let's keep going. So they've restructured this several times over the last several years, but right now there's only three levels of licenses, and you're here for, to get the first level, and we'll tell you what that is in a second. Each level gives you more privileges. Uh, the higher privileges will let you talk at long distances or around the world. Okay, we'll talk about that. And then a couple of years ago, the FCC eliminated Morse code. Because back in the old days, you had to also do Morse code to get these licenses. But now there's no more Morse code, OK? Uh, many parts of that hobby are used uh, for various community events, like through the radio communications for marathons or 5 or 10K races, or disaster services, and a bunch of other stuff. So it would be fun for kids of all, everybody of all ages. But here's a picture of, there's three classes of license, technician, general, and expert. The written test here that you're going to have to take is 35 questions. That one is 35. But you get a certain amount of privileges with the technician. When you get the general, you get more privileges. When you get the extra, there's a few more left. But this this is kind of the, the big license a lot of people like to get because it lets them do a lot of stuff. But if you just want to be interested in working locally, talking to folks locally, technician works fine. And this is a picture of kind of what's happening. Imagine coming to school, and on the first day of school, that teacher said, <coughs> I'm going to give you a book. And in this book is every question that could be on your final exam. Every question is in that book. Wow! What a novel idea that is. So, the FCC publishes all the 392 questions. And in next Thursday, Terry's going to give you a copy of this. Okay? The questions are, in the FCC's opinion, different categories. And so, for instance, in section T1, now why is this T1? Technician. T is for technician. Okay. Uh, it says this is about FCC rules and licenses responsibility. They have 65, 67 questions, of which six 
will come on your test. Okay? So here's the number of questions in the total pool. Here's how many will come out of each section, 35 on your test, and it takes 26 to pass. That's it. Okay? Every question on your test must come from here. There's no, no makeup questions. No. People who give you the exam don't make these questions up. They get, they get the test from the FCC. Okay? Now, <clears throat> I'm going to take you one more level down because it's, it's kind of an aid for you. Let's pick this section right here. Wave characteristics propagation. 33 questions. And you notice it says three test questions. Every question has a number. Are you ready? Watch this now. So for instance, in T3A03, that's a specific number of a specific question. So it's T, that means it's for the technician pool. It's number three, it's that one right there. Okay. Uh, it's section A. Oh, guess what? There's A section, a B section, and a C section. A has 11, B has 11 questions, and C has 11 questions. There's where the 33 questions come from. Now here's the trick, and you won't understand it now, but you will appreciate it later. One question must come from each subgroup. One. Must come from, will come from. Now, I'm telling you that for the following reason. There's going to be some stuff in here that say, oh my god, that is brute memorizing. Well, when you look at the question numbers, they might all come from one little group. Oh, guess what? Only one question can come from there. Which means if you say, I'm not going to memorize that, I'll just take that one and maybe I'll get it right. That's only one. So you'll understand this later. Okay. So that's how they're numbered. There's some questions that are deleted. You won't see them in the pool. Don't worry about it. Uh, so here's what's going to happen. Uh, I will cover all the material that's in the 10 sections of the FCC. Uh, the schedule, you have the schedule. Hey, Terry's giving you the schedule. She tells you what's the seven class days we're going to be here at the same time plus one more day when you'll actually be doing the test, okay? Uh, so that's that. Normally I tell people to stick around after the class, but you can't do that. But if there's a problem, then come a little early to the next class and ask me the question then, if, if you found something that didn't make sense to you. Okay, now what we got to do here is we got to get it so you can pass the test. It would be nice to sit here and play with radios and show you how to use radios. That won't help you pass the test, okay? So the focus is on getting you to pass the test. Okay. Uh, there's the answers that can't be taught and they got to be memorized. You know, it's like, how many inches in a foot? Twelve. That's a memorizing thing. How many feet in a yard? Three. That's a memorizing thing. Well, there's going to be a lot of stuff in here. There's going to be a bunch of stuff in here that's brute memory, and I will spend very little time on that. That's for you to memorize. Uh, there's some stuff that's too intuitive. And, like, for instance, can you use foul language on the radio? Well, the answer is no. That's pretty obvious. I won't spend much time on that. But there's some questions where there's a concept that if I can explain to you how the concept works, you might get several questions right. So I'll spend more time on this kind of stuff. And your, your approach could be you could try to memorize every answer, which there's nothing wrong with that. If you say, I'm going to memorize what the right answer is for all 392 questions, fine. Uh, or you could learn every answer. Well, unless you're an electrical engineer, you probably won't learn every answer, but that's okay. And option three is you'll do a little of each. That's probably the answer. You can forget this thing right here. Uh, there's a guy who is a ham radio operator who prints, he publishes and prints all of the 392 questions, but he has some other suggestions in here on how to, how to study for the test. I'll give you that information, don't worry about this. And it's in your miscellaneous section. It's called how to study for the test. We'll talk about that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cover all the 10 topics, but the FCC's topics aren't as nice and crispy clear as you'd like them to be. They, they give you a topic, but then the questions are all over the place. So what Gordy does in his book, he's broken all the 392 questions into 20 nice little categories. And he's put them in a nice logical order. And that's what you're going to see in this book. We're going to cover Gordy's 20 things. I'll answer any of your questions. I'll cover all the material in the question pool, and we'll see how. What I'm not going to do is read 392 questions and read the four answers. That's a waste of time. Okay? <coughs> Uh, so ask me to explain something if you don't understand it. If I'm going too slow or going too fast, let me know. Uh, if you see an error, a spelling error, uh, anything in this book, anything in the charts, it's an error. Let me know. I've never taught this class since 1985 where someone hasn't said, that's misspelled. Oh, this, so if you see an error, you've got to let me know, okay? Uh, okay. You will 
we'll now go to the next section, which is, oh, sorry about that, which is about amateur radio, right there. So this is where it starts, okay? And forget about the fact that a couple of questions are covered in here. That's, that's not important to you. Uh, okay, let's do this. So this is what Gordy put together. It's just about the amateur radio. The FCC created the amateur radio service in the early 1990s, 1900s. Their intent was to create a hobby that could be used in emergencies. That was their original intent, because back then, people couldn't go buy radios. Well, the only people that had radios were the military and the government. Okay. This amateur radio service is intended for persons who are interested in radio techniques solely with a personal aim and without a pecuniary interest. Now, the people who write these questions are kind of like legal, legal beagle people. What does this question mean? It means you can't use the amateur radio services and get paid for it. That's the pecuniary interest, okay? So that's what that's about. Now let me explain to you something else. You will notice some of the bullets on my charts have a bold thing up here, okay? If you put a T in front of this for technician, this is the paraphrasing of question T1A01. Okay, T1801. I'm going to wait till I get down here before I show you something else. So every place where I am paraphrasing a question and one of the answers, I'm going to tell you exactly which one it is, so you'll know which one it is. Okay. In other words, uh, have fun using a hobby, but you cannot get paid for any services, and that's that's the interesting thing here. The FCC, Federal Communications Commission, regulates and enforces the rules of amateur service in the United States of America and its possessions. Wherever you see something in parentheses, those are my words I've added in. They're not part of the question and answer. Now let me show you what I mean by paraphrasing. I'm going to go to the question pool. I'm going to show you question T1A02. You ready? There it is, right there. So when you get your thing next Thursday from Terry, this is like a 50 or 60 page document, and all these are going to be in alphanumeric order. So all the T's will come first, and the T2's, T3's, T4's. Uh, this is T1A02. The right answer is letter C. What agency regulates and enforces the rules of amateur radio service in the United States? And the answer is the FCC. Okay? So this is how you use the question and answer pool. They're all multiple choice, just like this. And as you can see, what I did in my bullet is I paraphrase that. The Federal Committee Commission which regulates and enforces the rules of image research in the United States. Okay. Now, I've added in my own personal extra words because if you live in Guam or one of the places that's a possession of the U.S., you're also getting your hand license through the FCC. Okay, but they they didn't include that, so that's okay. That's just for your information. Okay, let's keep going. After you pass your exam, you can operate a, a transmitter. Here we go on an amateur service frequency as soon as your name appears in the FCC's ULS. What's that mean? Universal Licensing System Database. Let me just tell you what that means. In the old days, you got a physical piece of paper back in the mail. There it is. There's your license, and you'll see one here momentarily. I'll show you a picture of mine. But nowadays, the FCC has a big computer database. So once the people who give you your test they take all the information, they mail it to the FCC, the FCC puts it in their database. Well, heck, you can go on the, their website, and if you can find it with a lot of patients, you can get to their ULS, Universal Licensing System, and if you find your name in there, you'll see your call letters. Now, obviously, about five days later, you'll get the thing in the mail from the, from the FCC. Uh, I will tell you another place in your miscellaneous section where it's much easier to go and get your call letters before it shows up in the mail. Okay, that's neither here nor there. Ten years is the normal term of an amateur radio license. So when you get a license, whatever the date says on there, it'll say expiration date, it'll be exactly ten years later. Now, what happens? Do you just lose it? No. You can renew your license uh, about 90 days before it expires. What's that mean? That means uh, you can go online or you can go to one of the people who give the test. You get this form, you fill it out, accept the box that says, am I starting a new license? Am I renewing a new license? Am I changing my address? You just check off, I'm renewing. Send it back to the FCC. They'll send you a license back that says, 
oh, your license now expires 10 years from now. Okay. So you can renew your license, but 